the Iranian people and resistance, and a staunch advocate of freedom and democracy, former president of the European Parliament's delegation for relations with Iraq, please welcome Mr. Struan Stevenson. Good evening, Madam President, Maryam Rajavi, and good evening to my dear brothers and sisters in Ashraf 3. My warmest greetings to you all, and especially to the courageous resistance units in Iran. It's a great privilege to speak to you this evening. Let me start following the last great speech by thanking the Albanian government, thanking the Albanian people for their courage in playing host to the PMOI inside Albania. Thank you also for your decisive action against the terrorist Iranians in expelling their ambassador and first secretary. I would ask you now one final thing. Please close the embassy in Tirana and get rid of these agents of terror. Hitler's thousand-year Reich only lasted 12 years. On that basis, the Iranian regime is well past its sell-by date. The 1979 revolution in Iran, which overthrew the despotic rule of the Shah, was quickly hijacked by the mullahs and their psychotic figurehead, Ayatollah Rohola Khomeini. Khomeini appointed himself as God's representative on earth, changing Iranian society overnight and giving birth to what is now known as Islamic fundamentalism. Khomeini's legacy of repression and corruption has been steadfastly maintained ever since. For the past 41 years, the Mullah's revolutionary creed of radicalized Islam, in reality, boils down to a policy of hatred. Hatred of the West, and in particular, America. A hatred of Sunnis a visceral hatred of Saudi Arabia and Israel, and a hatred of religious minorities of any kind. To achieve their constitutional objective of spreading revolution to create a fundamental Shiite caliphate, the clerical regime has vigorously backed Bashar al-Assad's bloody civil war in Syria. It has trained, financed, and commanded the brutal Shia militia in Iraq, it has sponsored the Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon and the Houthi rebels in Yemen. It has bankrolled and inspired the export of proxy wars and terror throughout the Middle East and the wider world. Every country the mullahs have targeted is now a smoking ruin. Founded on hatred, this theocratic fascist dictatorship has wrecked the Iranian economy, plundered the people's wealth, ruined the environment, and turned this once great nation into an international pariah. Deploying their Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, the IRGC, the regime's Gestapo, the mullahs have unleashed a homicidal blitz on their own population, crushing dissent, wantonly murdering and maiming thousands of peaceful protesters. Iran's jails are bursting at the seams with political prisoners, many of them young students, male and female, arrested during the most recent nationwide uprising in November 2019. The main targets for arrest, torture and execution are always supporters of the principal opposition movement the People's Mujahideen of Iran, the PMOI, and their families. Over the past four decades, 120,000 of its members and supporters have been executed. Dozens more have been assassinated outside of Iran. The latest wave of arrests and hard prison sentences for 
PMOI supporters and their families has laid bare the mullah's fear of the people who are now seething with rage at their criminal rulers. Iran has become a dangerous powder keg ready to explode. Last week, the trial began in Belgium of Asadollah Asadi, a diplomat from the Iranian embassy in Vienna. It's the first time in European history that a diplomat has been tried for acts of terrorism. Asadi was filmed handing over 500 grams of high explosives and a detonator to an Iranian couple from Antwerp, ordering them to bomb our great annual gathering at Villepant near Paris in June 2018. He and his conspirators have been in jail for the past two years awaiting trial, but the question has to be asked, who gave Assadi the orders to bomb the NCRI gathering? As foreign minister, Javad Sarif is in charge of Iran's, Iran's army of ambassadors and diplomatic staff. In June 2018, he was therefore responsible for the orders given to Asadollah Asadi. And this was not the only plot involving his diplomatic staff. As we've heard, Albanian intelligence officers uncovered a plan to detonate a bomb at Anuruz gathering of PMOI members in Tirana. Two MOIS agents, together with the Iranian ambassador and first secretary, were expelled from the country by the Albanian Prime Minister, Edi Rama. But even Zarif could not have taken the order to carry out such terror attacks without the consent and approval of Rouhani and the Supreme Leader, Ali Khamenei, and others. So all of them must now be held to account. All of them must be indicted for acts of terror and tried before the international criminal courts. And all of the Mullah's embassies, which they use as bomb factories and launch pads for terror attacks, must be immediately closed. Their terrorist attacks on the NCRI and the PMOI go right to the heart of the media as well. The regime is so frightened by the truth of the PMOI's popularity inside Iran that it goes crazy if it sees any positive media coverage. Following last Friday's huge global gathering, Mrs. Rajavi's speech was broadcast live on Iran international TV. The mullahs went mad. They ordered their agents and lobbyists around the world to bully TV channels. Freedom of the press is meaningless to the mullahs. They cannot stand the thought of Mrs. Rajavi, who is respected as a leader in Iran, to be seen or heard on television. They spewed out insults and abusive language on social media. They recognize no right for the media to decide on what they should show or who they should interview. Now, disgracefully, some newspapers and TV channels like Der Spiegel, Frankfurt, Frankfurter Allgemeine, The Guardian, Channel 4 News, have been seduced by the regime's demonization campaign against the PMOI. So I encourage the press to take their journalistic principles seriously. And as my colleague David Jones said in the gathering last Friday, today we want the BBC to open its airwaves, not to the mullahs, but to the Iranian speakers and convey the spirit of the Iranian resistance. This is what the British people and their cross-party representatives in the UK Parliament want to see happen. Brothers and sisters, the time has come to pull down the curtain on this murderous regime. After 41 years of tyranny, the Iranian regime's sell-by date has expired. The mullahs and their supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, have earned their place in the trash can 
of history alongside Hitler, Mao, Stalin, Pol Pot and every other failed tyrant. It's time to say goodbye and good riddance. Thank you very much. Exposing Tehran Regime's Nuclear Weapons Program. On August 14, 2002, the Iranian resistance exposed Natanz and Iraq sites, uncovering the Iranian regime's clandestine nuclear weapons program and alerting the world about the danger of the mullahs acquiring the atomic bomb. In the past two decades, as a patriotic duty, the Iranian resistance has relied on the information by the MEK to make 110 revelations, unmasking different aspects of the mullah's nuclear weapons program, thereby acting as the principal obstacle to prevent the mullahs from advancing their ominous projects. The 2015 Iran nuclear deal, ICPOA, disregarded Tehran's PMD activities. The IAEA has called on Iran to provide access to two locations and help clarify agency questions. June 2020, IAEA Board of Governors called on the regime to stop non-cooperation with nuclear inspection, reinstating the trigger mechanism and reimposing the six UN Security Council resolutions, complete halt to uranium enrichments, the closure of nuclear sites and any time, anywhere inspections are imperative to preventing the religious fascism from obtaining the bomb.